I'm troubled, of course, by the events of the last few days uh, as it relates to the Laquan McDonald case out Robin Kelly's hometown in Chicago. About a year ago, uh, many of us from the Congressional Black Caucus were on this very House floor talking about the failure to indict uh, in the killing of Michael Brown, and the same week, three days uh, later, the failure to indict uh, in the strangulation of Eric Garner, uh, who, of course, uh, was put into an unauthorized chokehold uh, and killed as a result of allegedly selling loose cigarettes. It, of course, highlighted the problem of African-American men being killed at the hands of police officers, which is a decade-old problem that hopefully here in America we'll find the courage one day to confront. And now, of course, we're compelled to come to the House floor to deal with the tragedy of the Laquan McDonald case. 17-year-old, shot 16 times in 15 seconds by an officer who had 20 prior civilian complaints filed against him. I'm no mathematician, but those numbers simply do not add up. The tape comes out, and we see what occurred. An individual, Laquan, who was walking away from the officers, not toward the officers. And there's no reasonable circumstance, I believe, that led to that individual being shot down like a dog on the streets of Chicago. The officer has now been indicted 13 months later, and hopefully the justice system will run its course and the officer will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. But I'm here today to talk about briefly the issue that relates to this problem of the police use of excessive force. And that's not just the bad apples who engage in this behavior. It's the fact that far too often the police officers in the department who may not otherwise engage in excessive force, but who have grown up in a culture of a blue wall of silence, who support these officers either with their inaction or in some instances by actively participating in a cover-up. Now, I know that's hard for a lot of Americans to hear because, listen, I also believe the overwhelming majority of officers are hardworking individuals who are there to protect and serve. And I don't take lightly the fact that I'm here concerned on the House floor that far too many officers stand by, tolerate, enable the excessive use of force, sometimes resulting in American citizens being killed without justification. But this case actually highlights the problem. So Laquan gets killed, and if you look at the reports in the immediate aftermath of his death last October, and I just pulled a few, here's what we were told. The suspect fled and officers gave chase, police said. When the officers confronted him near 41st Street and Pulaski Road, he refused their orders to drop the knife and began walking toward the officers, police said. Pat Camden, spokesman for the Chicago Fraternal Order of Police, said the teen had a crazed look about him as he approached the officers with the knife. That was reported by CBS. Let's go to NBC. Responding officers found a 17-year-old boy with a, quote, strange gaze about him who was carrying a knife and wouldn't drop it when police ordered him to do so, Fraternal Order of Police spokesman Pat Camden said. Other officers used a squad car to try and box the boy in against a fence near West 41st Street and South Pulaski Road. An officer shot him in the chest when the teen didn't drop the knife and continued to walk toward the officers, police said. 
WGN-TV. Chicago police officers shot and killed a 17-year-old after a foot chase near 41st and Pulaski. Officers shot the teen after he waved the knife at them. In the interest of time, let me just read one more. Officers got out of the car. This is the Chicago Tribune. Officers got out of the car and began approaching McDonald, again telling him to drop the knife. The boy allegedly lunged at the officers, and one of them opened fire. When police tell you to drop a weapon, all you have to do is drop it. I mean, Shakespeare would be proud at the fiction that was put out there to justify the murder of this 17-year-old. But here's what's worse. It's now been reported that in the immediate aftermath of the shooting, four or five officers went to a nearby Burger King and asked to view the surveillance tape. The manager at Burger King gives them the password to the video. They spent a couple of hours in Burger King. I mean, a couple of hours in Burger King, allegedly. And then they leave. And then internal affairs officers apparently come in the days afterward, and they pull the tape. And guess what? 86 minutes are missing. It happens to be the 86 minutes that cover the period of time when Laquan McDonald, Laquan, was killed. And so when we come to the House floor and people across the country say Black Lives Matter and they're concerned about the lack of justice in the system, understand, it's not just the excessive use of force. It's the fact that far too many officers Law enforcement folks participate actively in covering up what has occurred. And until we deal with that cancer of the blue wall of silence, we're going to continue to have to come to this House floor. You're going to continue to see individuals be killed as a result of the use of excessive force. It's an American problem that we should confront, and we should confront it boldly, and directly and without hesitation, if we really want to uplift the best values of our great democracy, I thank Congresswoman Kelly, I thank Congressman Payne for their tremendous leadership, and I yield back.